Hi, welcome to my studio. My name's Chris. I just received in the mail this Ba Hong 100% cotton watercolor paper. I'm excited to get it out of the box and take my first look at it. Let's get started. So I've just received my 10 sheets of cold press Ba Hong watercolor paper. This is artist grade. This is their highest grade of paper. And I'm going to open it up and take a, a good first look at it. When you first remove the tape, you see it'll open up and flatten pretty well. I like that. I've gotten other paper that's come in rolls before and it's um, had a very strong roll shape to it, but this is actually flattening out pretty well right out of the box. That's a nice sign. It's also well packaged uh, here. It's um, got a nice heavy plastic covering, covering all the paper. I've just carefully cut one end of the plastic bag and I'm going to leave the paper in the bag for a little bit of extra protection. The first piece of paper to come out is just a protective sheet. That's not watercolor paper. Another tip here is just really make sure you've got a clean workspace and that your hands are really clean before you start handling this paper. The paper comes with a deckled edge on all four sides and there is an imprint from the manufacturer in one corner. Now this watercolor comes in what's called an imperial full sheet. Imperial meaning it comes from the old days, the British Empire. And it's 33, sorry, it's 30 inches by 22 inches in size. So if you want to paint in a full sheet, when they say full sheet, they mean a full 30 by 22 inches. I don't know very many watercolor artists that paint in full sheets. Very difficult to do. I've never done it. Some people paint in half sheets. So that would be a 15 by 22. I don't think I've ever done that either. I do paint, however, in quarter sheets. So that would be this piece of paper cut in four, and that's gonna be 11 by 15 inches, and that's a really common size for people to paint in in watercolor. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I cut these up and get them ready for painting. So to cut these down to size, you're gonna need a tape measure or a large ruler. The longest edge actually comes out to being 30 and a half inches. So we're going to have to go 15 and a quarter to find the center. I'm going to put a couple marks on here. Now there's two ways to actually cut your paper. You can cut it with a pair of scissors or you can rip it. I'm going to show you both ways. Sometimes this longer cut here down the middle uh, at the 15 and a half inch mark is a little easier to do with scissors because it's a large piece like this is a little harder to rip. There you go, I'm ready for my half sheet paintings. Now some people don't like to cut their paper because they really like having the deckled edge, which is really created when you rip your paper. So let's go ahead and do that next. Again, my tape measure tells me this is a little bit over 22 inches. It's 22 and 3 eighths. So we'll go 11 and 3 sixteenths to be exact. Doesn't have to be exact, but I kind of tend to be a perfectionist. Now in this case, I do have an 18 inch ruler. I highly recommend a metal ruler that has cork on the back because it grips the paper really well. You lay that down across this line that you've just put on the paper. And if you hold it down really firmly, you can really easily just rip the paper. Some people say you need to fold the paper back and forth before you rip it like that. I don't find that's true. Paper, watercolor, high quality watercolor paper like this will rip really easily as long as you have a good straight edge, usually a metal straight edge, and you hold it down really tight against the paper as you rip it. It's not a problem. Now I have two quarter sheets that I can use in my paintings. Again, this is the largest size that I ever paint on. So now as for my first impressions of this paper, uh, again, I'm really pleased with the fact that even though it came shipped in a roll, in a box, it's really flattening out very easily, very quickly, uh, just once I've taken it out of the box. I have purchased rolled paper before that comes in a 45 inch wide roll. It's like 
30 feet long. Uh, and I've purchased it that way from Archers before. I have a video about that on my uh, channel if you want to watch it. Um, it's a very economical way to buy your paper in a big bulk roll. However, because it's on a roll and it was shipped that way, uh, and I have to store it on the roll because I don't have any place big enough for it, uh, it tends to keep its rolled shape for very long. Whereas this sheet paper, even though it was rolled for shipping, is really flattening out quite nicely. And that's, that's actually really nice because dealing with the roll in the paper on that bulk roll has been a little bit of a pain. Some people are interested in knowing how to determine which side is the right side of the paper. There is a little bit more of a texture on the uh, correct or upside or right side of the paper. Uh, the back side tends to be a little flatter. The, the upside, the right side tends to be have a little more texture. Technically, you can paint on either side, it doesn't matter, but I like the texture of both the cold press and the rough papers, and so I really try to always paint on the side that has the greatest texture. This ball hung paper doesn't have a real strong deckled edge uh, around these sides that come uh, from the manufacturer, but they have a slight deckel to them. A lot of people really like that, again, and that's why they always uh, rip their paper instead of cutting it. But uh, I like the look of this paper a lot. It's, it's really nice. So I've already done another video on the ball honk paper. You can check my channel out for that. I got the sample test kit of 20 pieces of ball honk paper. I painted on all the different grades and textures of paper and gave my initial impression. So far, so good. I really like this paper a lot. And I plan to do uh, my next paintings on this and I'll let you know how I like it. I purchased this paper on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description below. I have other videos about my studio, how I set up my studio, my other supplies that I use. So if you'd like to learn more about that, check out those videos as well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you've used this paper or if you have any questions about it, I'm happy to answer any questions I can. Thanks and have a great day. See you next time.